Boop, a tune. Give it a minute. Okay. I think we're about leveled off, so we can get started. Thank you, everybody, for coming this week. This is the weekly Mid Journey Office Hours. We do them every week, Wednesdays at 12 Pacific Time. The way we do this is that we talk about what we're working on, what we're thinking about. And then we take questions, and then that's it. We do a combination of voice questions on the stage, so raise your hand if you want to be one of those, and lightning round questions where you ask questions in the VC text channel at the bottom of the Discord. And then I just yell out lots of answers. Um, I like hearing voices, so I don't want to just do tech stuff only, but it's good to just churn through a bunch of questions really quickly. Um, Yeah. Sorry about the Discord outage today. I think that was not caused by us. There was just went out and it came back. So happy everybody here can make it. Um, the main things going on this week are uh, we're testing a bunch of stuff with the guides and mods that we hope to release to the community soon. So we're testing the phase one of the next website. Um, which is sort of the same features of the current website, but much faster and better search and looks nicer. And then there's going to be a phase two of the website, which involves image generation, but that will take a little longer because we may also add social features at the same time. So we're deciding still whether we're going to have a phase two with both social and creation, or we'll do phase two with creation only for the more pro map for the more experienced members, and then wait to onboard until we have social. We don't really want to onboard new users yet until we have social features because we think that um, just every time we test it, it seems like a bad idea. Um, so um, the social features will take longer to go. They're, they are coming up. The creation is a little bit more ahead right now, so we'll have to make some decisions about that. Uh, we don't really want to split the community. I know some people here are more antisocial than others, but... You know, a lot of people are here because of the community, so we have to be careful. Um, so we're, we're debating about that still. I don't think we've made a decision yet. Um, we'll have to kind of, yeah, we'll probably not make the decision. We'll just start making all of the, putting all the features in at the same time, and we'll see the velocity. And based off of the velocity of the social stuff, we'll decide whether we want to push the social stuff to a second, a, a third phase or not. Um, the other things we're testing with the guides and mods are a new upscaler. Um, so we kind of have several different upscalers coming. There's a, one that's more faithful. I think we've been calling it subtle. Um, I'm not sure what we'll call it yet, whether it be like upscale subtle, upscale faithful, upscale precise. I'm not sure. Um, and then we're going to have like an upscale, like imaginative, or I'm not sure what to call it, creative. They're probably like subtle versus creative. And then the one, the cre creative upscale will be like more of a dramatic change. It will change if there's, if it, you know, it'll, it's more likely to change details. Um, which means that like, mm -hmm. yeah, if it sees a, if it sees an issue, it'll remove, it'll fix it. Whereas if you make it sort of very faithful or subtle, it's going to keep the issues, you know? Um, but make everything higher, so kind of reduces pixelation, but keeps the glitches. So um, the more creative upscaler is the one that is more behind right now. We do have some versions of it, so we don't ha have any doubts that it's going to come out, but it's just more behind right now. Um, so, but the first subtle version is working, and... Um, we did a poll with the guides and mods, and among the current guides and mods, oh shoot, did it wipe out? I think it was like 90% of them felt like we should release the current upscaler that we're testing. So they're pretty happy with it. Yeah, let's, no, let's see, it's 30, 39 and 7, so that's 46 guides and mods voted yes. Four said neutral, and nobody said no. 
So that means that basically everybody said yes. I guess that's like, yeah, like 10% said they were neutral and 90% said they were, they were yes. Um, and, um, so, you know, that's cool. Um, the upscaler is a little slow right now. It takes a few minutes, but it does look pretty good. Um, we can go pretty high resolution. I think we haven't decided on the final resolution or if we'll do multiple levels of upscaling. Um, so basically, but it works. Um, so I think one of the questions that we have to decide now is um, the other parts of our stuff is a little bit further behind. So um, we're going to try to, like the other features that we want to put in a 5.3 release was like a new aesthetic system to kind of update the look a little bit. And then we also wanted to have this personalization. Um, the personalization, I think, will roll out for testing to guides and mods by the end of day today or tomorrow. So um, the personalization will be testing this week. Um, we're testing it internally with the employees today and um, with the team. And uh, there's some bugs, so we're fixing it. Yeah, if any guide or mod accidentally has access to the personality tests, don't use it. It's not working yet. Sorry. Yeah. Anyway, um, it's not working yet. So there's some bugs with the way the settings are. Uh, with the settings. So don't fuck with it until we announce it. <laughs> um, yeah. So the upscaler resolution will be at least 2x higher. Um, it's possible it could be 4x higher. We haven't, I think we're going to try to get it to be, go up to 4x higher. Um, but, you know, I think the first goal is just 2x higher. Um, so I think the question at this point is, um, basically what other upscaler things will come to the, will come by the end of the week? Um, we may make it. So we, we know that the upscaler can be faster. Um, we know it can be better, and we know there can be multiple versions. But we also know that everybody's happy with the current one that's in testing. So I would lean towards releasing something by the end of this week. Um, yeah. I think the main question will be is, like, what we'll have by the end of this week. So... I think it's possible that at the very least we will release a basic upscaler this week and then nothing else. And then we'll have follow up with more upscalers and then the personality tests and then the extra aesthetics. And then there's a chance that we get, you know, multiple upscalers by the end of this week or a better upscaler by the end of this week or the, the personality test by the end of this week. Um, so, you know, it's possible that We'll release multiple things by the end of this week, but I mean, we could release it today, but my gut says to not rush it today, but to kind of like see what we have by the end of the week, release that, and then just kind of keep trying to release something every single week. Um, so I think we're going to, I think we're going to try to release something this week, whatever we have, and then next week we'll release more. Um, that's what I'm leaning towards right now. I mean, we could... We could decide to wait a little longer, go to next week, but I'm just like kind of, this is how we make decisions. This is just what I'm saying. Uh, we're like leaning towards, because it's like pretty great. The new upscaler is pretty, I mean, it's not even that good yet, but it's still great. So if we can release it, it doesn't hurt anything. Seems okay. But, yeah, we'll see. Um, that's kind of what we're leaning towards, but we're kind of, we'll see what we have by Friday, and then whether we decide to release it Friday or Monday, you know, I don't know exactly, so, you know, those are all kind of our debates right now, but I think the important thing is, rather than re trying to announce a specific day, um, I think it would be more important just for me to say that we're you know 
we're testing things and that the upscaler is basically past our first, though the first upscaler has passed our pre-release testing and that the personality test stuff will enter testing soon, as soon as we finish debugging it. Like we had it working in a manual mode, but then we tried to put it to the bot and it's not working quite right. So there's some kind of bug. So we are trying to debug it as we speak. And then the other upscalers are, it's been a little bumpy, but it's definitely coming along. So they will come too. And then the upscalers for V6 might be even better. Um, but we'll see. Um, yeah, we're pretty happy with the upscaler. It's much better than the ESR GAN stuff. Um, it's probably not as good as it could be. Like, it still feels like it could be a little bit more detailed. Um, but it's, so it's like a little smoother than I'd like it to be, but it's, it's pretty good. But it could be better. I mean, no, it could be a lot better. So, um, yeah, we're debating a little bit exactly what our release, what exactly, how, like what exactly we're going to release when. But we're getting close, so that's good. Um, V6 is coming along more too. Still a little behind. I'm going to be honest, but the individual components of V6, which we are testing. Each look very good. So we know when the V6 comes, the image quality will be way better. The aesthetics will be way better. Resolution should get way better. So in general, like, V6 is going to be really serious. It's going to be a really, really serious upgrade beyond V5. But we have a lot of things that are still coming in V5 too. So I think we're going to see basically a bunch of V5 things this month. And then we should finally see V6 probably closer to next month, but it might be towards the end of next month because it's taking a while. Yeah, V6 is just taking a while. It's going to be really hard to estimate the dates, but I think the important thing around V6 is that like, we pretty much have all the components of V6 working individually. So now it's about putting them all together. Um, training the final model, and then tuning it. Um, so very low risk at this point, mainly just a matter of how long it takes it from an engineering standpoint to put things together. Since the final model is pretty big and takes a while to train, there's like when you put it all together, like the supercomputer just like breaks down and then you have to like debug things and it breaks again and then it debug, debug things. So it just kind of takes a bit to kind of um, get everything working and, and part of this is because every time we change from like v3 to v4 to v5 to v6 it's pretty much like an entirely different system like the code is really really different and the architectures are really really different and the data is really really different and so when you put all those really different things together um, you just get like a lot of things breaking for the first time and so sort of uh, different versions of v5 like the niji or different versions of v6 like 6.1 whenever it comes one day are much easier to push because the main code is already working but then the first version that we train is a little hard because it kind of uh, is putting all this stuff together and you don't know what's what's broken yeah and uh yep i 3d is looking good for making more progress on 3d video is gearing up we have some nice video data sets now that we're uh and we're still working on it a little bit but it's like we've sourced it and so there'll be a lot of really cool stuff coming over the next three or six months um but Yeah. Um. And there'll definitely be a 5.3. It's possible instead of calling it 5.3 and trying to fit everything in, we'll call it 5.3 and 5.4. Um, 
you know, and just kind of keep rolling it. So we'll see. But yeah, basically at this point, the questions are like, what exactly is our release cadence? Like when exactly are the release dates for the different short term things? And then how much we break it out into more than one release. Um, so we'll see, but I'm pretty sure everyone will be happy with the upscalers and the personality test stuff when it works is quite incredible. So I think people really enjoy that too. Um, hey. yeah, so things are cooking. Um, so in, in many ways, this month is going to be about smaller things that are really exciting but um yeah and then next month hopefully will be about the like the bigger things um hey so yep that's kind of what it's gonna look like um we don't use gans i was sorry i shouldn't answer questions for people in the chat room Anyway, um, I feel like, what else am I missing? Mm. Yeah, just reminding people that we are working on basically a standalone web platform. Um, and then we are working on mobile things too. We are working on 2, 2D and 3D and video. And basically we're releasing a bunch of stuff bunch of smaller things this month and then hopefully a bunch of bigger things next month but the bigger things next month are so big they could always get delayed a little bit so it's hard to know exactly the dates for a really big release but we're very confident about all the things going on and uh it's chugging And of course, there's a lot of longer term, crazier things going on too. So, all right, let's take some questions. The personality thing is basically going to be like you can generate little personality tests for your specific settings or prompts, and then you can kind of dial it in to exactly the style you want. And then you get a little code that you can use yourself or share. You can also share the personality tests. Um, and then that will style the image in that way. And you can use multiple personalities, um, you know, with the same account. I don't think we'll let you use multiple ones at the same time, but and there's no, yeah, mainly just one at a time, but they'll be pretty cool. You can dial in a lot of things. It'd be hard to dial in with words. It will cost like a little bit of money to generate the tests, unfortunately. So right now... We were going to go with a standardized test for everybody, but it wasn't working as well. So then we're letting people do personalized tests. So right now the personalized tests are like, you know, 15 fast minutes, 30 fast minutes, 60 fast minutes, depending on how big of a test you do. Um, maybe we'll change that. I don't know. But like, that's how much it costs us. So whether we discount it is a separate question, but... Um, uh, hi. Yeah. Hello. Hello, Wait, Justin. Can you guys hear me? I can hear you. What's up? I can't. I'm so sorry, guys. I can't seem to to hear you. Now I can hear I'm you. So well, if not, you can always oh, come back. I'm so sorry. Can you hear me now? <laughs> hear you fine um, i'm so sorry i'm so sorry for being that guy i'm so sorry i can't, can't hear you now <laughs> it's my first office hour um yeah i, I i'm so sorry yeah my first office hour so i'm sorry i just was asked a billion times already i was just curious to know if there was ever going to be some kind of way to replicate uh someone's likeness or more specifically my likeness i get the ethical concerns around this topic and um i i, I know about the insight face um plugin I was just curious about whether we would ever have any way of replicating uh, my likeness. I like stable diffusion, but uh, Mid Journey would be so wonderful to use, just it built in 
with my likeness. That's all. Uh, we're going to definitely do some kind of character consistency where you can like push a character into the images in some way. It's mainly meant for using it with mid journey images um, to like keep it consistent, but we could do it with external images too. We're just debating a little bit on how that might work. I think it's likely we'll let people use external images, but then if you use an image of a real person, we have no way to know if that's you or someone else. So we probably will have stricter moderation policies. Yeah. You know? yeah. Um, so something like that. Okay. Great to know. Thank you so much, guys. I really appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Hello, Pig Pog. Can't hear you. Yeah. Hello. 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 What's happening? Uh, uh, I am curious about the social features because I know that you are sort of like anti Instagram like chasing social type stuff. So I'm wondering what these social features are and how you guys are thinking about them. And, uh, if you can speak to, to anything that you've been playing with and are hoping to get into that phase two release. Yeah, we want to be a little more secretive around the social stuff, but I think it's like we're we're trying the first thing we want to make sure is that by making a website, we aren't discarding everything that's good about Discord. I think that's the main concern. Um cuz like there's obviously a lot of things that are good on Discord and then there's a lot of things that are bad. And so we want to make the website basically take all of the good things and try to and try to do as much of them as possible. Um as good as possible. And then there are other things where we want to innovate on top of that. So probably like the biggest area that we would innovate on top of that um, is like something around finding interesting images, you know, because right now there's still just so many images that are being generated and it's hard to find them. And so we want to make that a lot better. Um, we don't really want to copy Discord in any way because uh, A, we don't want to build the Discord and B... Like, I mean, uh, Discord is actually not probably the optimal native interface in any way. But, I mean, there are some... I but I, I think that, like... So, like, I think if you, like... The, current, the first website probably looks more of, like, if you, if you like, built Discord from scratch for MidJourney, but it was, like, more important that it was good for MidJourney than it was good for Discord. So you would see, like, some social features... For people to interact with each other, but it would be like way less than Discord. But the the features that are in there are ones that are like uh, really necessary, really important. You know, um, like we will let people. There will be like there will be like people will have the ability to communicate on the website without Discord. But we're probably not gonna do like emoji reacts anywhere or something like that. You know what I mean? Um, but there will be some form of communication on the on the platform. Um, like channels in a similar way to Discord or, or like a friends list or... I don't think it's going to exactly be like channels or friends list. Um, I think we're going to go with something that is... Uh, uh, I probably won't say, but it, it's, 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 um, you know, I think, what, I think we're almost there. I, I, it was on yeah. the tip of your lips. I can feel it. No, yeah. I think it's, um... I don't totally like Discord is really good in a lot of ways, but Discord actually comes from like a long line of chat based, like like real time messaging, like messaging like platforms. And I'm not totally convinced that 
a lot like like i i rather than trying to take discord and take a step forward i would be more likely to go backwards in time to like earlier progenitors and rethink those um so like i uh, i think in many i think like p like i think phpbb and irc are like more interesting in a lot of ways than discord and reddit like discord and reddit um like obviously are really good in a lot of ways but i think they were some sacrifices made in order to make it like super accessible but obviously discord is not super accessible for our use case so when you strip away the things that make it hard less accessible and then you you pull back you're kind of going back like 10 or 20 years you know um and so i think a lot about I think less around like how do I make Reddit or Discord into Mid Journey, and I think more about like, okay, like Discord and Reddit are philosophical uh, divergences from the PHP BB and IRC days, and um, some elements of that, like what works inside of Discord, what works inside of Reddit, you know, with Mid Journey, and then what are things that don't work well. And so I'm kind of like, I feel like I'm dissecting it and we're going to basically build something new. Um, so it's going to look a little weird, to be honest. Um, it's like going to be a little weird. On the social, would you say it's like communication and like, like digging into search, like maybe bringing back collections of and like the ability uh, to type of stuff out or like mood board type things and that you can share with people? So I, I, um, I think collections and mood boards are cool, but I think that that's adding complexity, which is not absolutely necessary for the first version. Um, we are planning on adding folders, you know, or it'll be something like between folders and tags and collections. It's like kind of like a, yeah. I think it's going to be closer to to like albums or tags and that like an image can exist in more than one folder at the same time. Um, and not like, I yeah, so we are going to add some kind of, we are, are going to add organization, but I don't think we're going to have hierarchical organization right now. And I don't think it's going to be exclusive organization, meaning it's like an either A or B, but not A and B, you know? So yeah, more like music playlist. Um, I don't think we're going to have them shareable at the beginning, but like we're going to let people have some organization um, and see how that goes. Um, and we have a nice user. But you say like... When you say like they wouldn't be shareable, you mean like I wouldn't uh, like if, if it's public, I would be able to like send somebody to my my public like playlist or collection or whatever it is. But like I wouldn't be able to like invite somebody into it to collab with me. Is that what you mean? We're not planning. The current version will not allow you to share it or collab in it. Okay, so it'll just be for your own personal organization. Yeah, I, I mean, I don't think like folders are the basic unit of social interaction so i think that they are really necessary for some people because they're making a lot of images and they want to like organize them you know that seems reasonable but i'm nervous about making something social unless it needs to be social so i'm trying to be really minimal with the degree of organizational features and social features because they have to like immediately scale to millions of people on day one. So it's a little hard to both launch at that scale and keep it mobile, like, like nimble. Um, so we're going to be really minimal. We have to be really, really minimal. So we're going to have some really minimal kind of organization. And then we're going to have some really minimal kind of social. I, yeah, I think the... I think the organization is looking more like tags or albums right now. We'll see if that's a good idea. But I mean, we have like a pretty good mock-up and a pretty good mock-up of what it's going to look like. And it feels right. So we'll see how that goes. Obviously, they could have like way more complicated organizational stuff. But at some point, it's like literally a file system. And so we're trying to avoid like launching with a file system on day one. Um, Yeah. I don't really know what to say about that. I think eventually, yeah, I, I get really nervous around the sort of like the sort of when it looks more of like a, a pro tool and there's like 12 ways of doing the same thing. 
that have to be supported for 20 years. Like, that's how you kind of get, like, the, you know, Adobe-level bloat, you know? Mm -hmm. You can't really innovate anymore. <laughs> um, no one really wants that. I mean, that would, that, would, that, would, that would be bad for us right now. So we have to be really minimal. Basically, we're trying to only do things that we feel like will be there for 10 years. If that makes sense? So, like, I think something like the idea of a tagging, you know? Like, I want this to be in this tag. I want this to be in this tag. That feels like something that could be around for 10 years. Some kind of basic social interaction. Um, I think that'll be around in 10 years. But, like, yeah. Um, but, like, buddy lists? I mean, buddy lists is interesting, but... Top eights? <laughs> what? Top eights. Top eights? Remember MySpace? Um, top eight? Yeah. No. Yeah, I, I'm. I, I think so. It's gonna be, yeah. So we need some real time. I, it's a, I think it's gonna be a combination of like real time and asynchronous social interaction. Um, and uh, there'll be some new mechanics for both. But I, I, I think we don't exactly know what it'll look like yet. Like we've done some prototypes, but we're not using them day to day yet. Whereas we are using a lot of other things day to day right now. And so we'll see. Uh, a couple quick ones on the on the bigger grids. Uh, is that something to be expected more along with like V six or something that we might see in like V five point three, uh, or, or sooner than than V six's release? Is I, I'm uh, I'm really excited about the idea of larger grids. Don't think we're gonna do bigger grids in V five because it would be really expensive. Like V five is not meant to do big grids. Like. A big grid costs like X times more than a small grid for V5. Mm -hmm. um, so like, you know, 64 by 64 would cost, um, what, like 16 times more than into 4 by 4, 2 by 2. Um, so, I mean, you can use dash dash repeat a little bit, but right now the grids I think would be too expensive for the users, um, the majority of the users. So I think in V6, we're planning on changing it. So... It has more of like a multi-resolution. Uh, like you can do bigger grids at lower resolution. Then you can upscale and iterate on the individual ones that you like. And so if we operate at low resolution, then we can generate more images at the same cost. Would so, you say that like the, the new way of viewing the images with the phase one of the of the web release, if you're doing like a like a repeat function and generating you know, like 10 of those two by two grids, w would you be able to like view them in a way that feels like it's one big large grid in a sense and, and kind of get that same sort of impact? No, but um, you will be able to flip through them really fast and you'll be able to search. Like they, it, it will be, you will be able to move through them really fast. Um, and you'll be able to organize them really fast. So that's good. Well, we'll see if the, I'm not sure if the folders will get into the phase one or if it'll be in phase two. I think the team is tempted to push out a phase one without folders as soon as possible, then put the folders out at some other point. So, but, uh, yeah, it still has ratings in it. Um, and you can flip, it's hard to describe, but we have like a light box mode, we call it. So it's like a way to look at a single image and it's a lot nicer than the, the way that you look at a current, a single image on the current thing that is really fast. And so you can just, um, I won't give it away, but it's, we can just go through images really, really like more quickly than anything else that I've ever seen on the internet. So, I mean, it could be better, but it's pretty great. Um, yeah, <laughs> it'll get better, but it's pretty great. I'm very happy with it right now. Um, Awesome. Yeah, yeah, it's sort of like strictly better in every way. I would say that, than everything else. The, the new web, yeah, you know, everything is strictly better. Well, and, and um, I think there's like one or two features missing, but they're not like features you absolutely need. They're features that are nice, but nothing you. Yeah, um, we can like bring some of them back, but they're not. Yeah, I think the only feature missing right now is like find similar images. It took. We could add that back, but. It, it's also, in my opinion, not the most important. I didn't, I never used it. 
I mean, I sometimes use it. It's pretty rare. Oh, mostly like, so uh, like you you upload an image and it will it's like a reverse image search type of deal. It'll find similar. No, I think on the current website, if you look under any image, it shows you similar images. I, and I don't know. I I didn't. I don't. I don't use that. So, um, but we are. I know some people use it, so you might add a button for it somewhere. Sure. And then, okay, last one uh, with obviously like Firefly Two release and like the. come online by like 30%. And I think the pro users and the mega users have faster image generation because of that. But we can't really build a product around that because that would only go to pro users, which seems not right. Mm -hmm. um, so next year, our, like we're, we're building up the data centers more this year, but then we're not going to really see product changes based off those data centers until next year because we want to wait until we have enough data center capacity for all the users before we make it required. Because um, when we do that, we'll probably like increase the compute per user by like 4x. Um, or by a lot. I don't know, three, 2x, 3x, 4x. We're going to compete. We're, we're, maybe it's only 2x. We'll see. We're going to increase the amount of... I mean, we yeah, we can either drop prices or we can increase the compute in the product. I think right now we're going to increase the compute in the product. Um, I mean, we could do either, but... You know, I think in general, making things better, you can make things better, you can make things cheaper. And so I think right now, most people want things to be better. Like, there will always be a free thing. Someone else will, all, like, it seems like the way the market is going to work is that there'll always be somebody who is willing to lose money to make something free. That's, like, not good. And then it seems like because we can't really win the free battle because we're not like burning an investor's money um, or like, you know, doing like, like, like taking ad dollars from another business or something. Um, like we can't really win that battle. So it makes sense. It makes more sense for us to just be the best, you know, and then just charge money for the best, but you know, like, um, and so, yeah, in general, we're kind of leaning towards just like being really high end. Um, I mean, we. I think high end like Apple though. Like Apple is high end, but it's like, you know, it's like a, it's like the best you can get for a quality for for a price that everybody can afford, even though it's not the cheapest thing, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, yeah. There are a lot well, of which I agree, but the free has like these. The free has these like catches. Like you can only make twenty five images, or you you know you can only you get like X images a day, and then they don't even let you pay for more. Or so. There's like a lot of weird catches, I think. It'll be fun to see if anybody else really does something really high scale at free. Um, so far, all the free stuff is relatively small scale in comparison to our stuff, but um, I don't know. I, I think it'll be good. I'm happy that somebody, I'm happy that like somebody like Facebook will lose a bunch of money to introduce people to image generation. And then if people like it, they can you know, join mid journey and have more advanced tools. Yeah. Let, let the free tear be the, be the competitors. <laughs> and yeah, I mean, as long as the free stuff is, you know, as long as the free stuff doesn't give you a bad experience. So like right now I, um, I kind of like the Facebook one more than I like Dolly three in some ways, because like, if you're not very good at it, um, 
it gives you a better result, I think. Like, it seems kinder um, to the beginner, but whereas Dolly does a lot of weird stuff still, um, like, you can, if you use it, if, you, if you're good at it, Dolly's obviously better, but if you're not good at it, I, I'm not sure. It feels like a worse experience. Well, I'll say all those little releases that you guys do, even, like, the weird parameter in painting, panning, zoom out, like, all that stuff just breathes new life and it gets oh, yeah. everybody excited uh, to, to keep playing around. So, like, having those, like, the personalized styles and, like, bigger grids and, like, w whatever else comes before V6, like, that stuff is always awesome and, and sometimes yeah. more fun than even, like, a, a, a version release. Uh, yeah, it's cool. Yeah. I feel really good about the sort of sub the small new features. They are really fun. I'm really enjoying them in the testing. So like I'm very convinced that it's important. Um, yeah, I, I'm very yeah. The main question is, is like, do I release them one at a time or do I do I do I put them together? I think that's the only thing I haven't figured out yet. Hard to decide. A little little drip campaign once a week. We get something special. A little mid journey treat. I'm open to that. <laughs> Uh, all right, well, I've been up here long enough. I want to give somebody else a chance to to jump on, but appreciate the insights, excited for the for the upcoming personalization, all the new stuff. Uh, it's uh, it's awesome to see. I, I love all the updates. So thanks again. Uh, see you next week. Yeah. Peace. Uh, hi. Uh, that was... A nice mid-journey chat. Can I derail it by asking your opinions about some philosophy of research choices in physics? Sure. So I was wondering what your like general thoughts on the kind of pursuit of the theory of thing or general unified th theory in physics and how it's like dominated like popular science and like what we think of as a physicist and how what you think the impact that has had on physics and physicists as a whole. Uh, I think something's broken in physics. Not not making progress. I feel like for tw thirty or forty years, it seems bad. I mean, obviously we have made progress, but like in some ways, like the overarching goal of physics is to like create a more unified theory and to solve these sort of big questions, and we haven't done that. So, I think that means that either the approach is wrong the culture is wrong or the assumptions are wrong. So, you know, the assumption in like a grand unified theory is that the universe is fundamentally simple and there should be a beautiful theory that unifies it. And it is possible that maybe the universe isn't simple, that it's complicated and ugly, which would be scary. But, you know, if that was the case, then I think the way we're approaching it might be wrong. Um, and then there's the chance that we have a go cult theory where like everybody's all in on string theory and if they didn't do that like maybe there's some other thing that would have happened so maybe it's a cultural thing or maybe there's like a maybe there's some other problems where like we should have like particle physics maybe was like a miss maybe all the particle accelerators were a mistake and we should have like radically invested in more space stuff and gone more like you can either look for weird physics in space or you can look for weird physics on earth and maybe we just, you know, shouldn't have looked for it on Earth. We should have gone more for space. Um, oh, as as a particle physicist, I, I have quite enjoyed the funding that we've been thrown, um, which has been useful. But when you were talking about the cultural thing with physics and like academia and tenure, like whenever there's a new thing that pops up, like a department opens it so they can say they have like, we have a like a strong group or we have a GCD like simulation group. And then when you had like the kind of movements for like M theory and quantum gravity, every department opened up and basically hired a bunch of professors to do that work. Did, did, are you suggesting, I, I also kind of agree that that was possibly led to like a lack of exploration of other areas or smart people being dragged into spaces and focus on an area that hasn't had much success in producing testable outcomes. Um, I mean, academia is probably just broken in general. Um, I don't know what fully caused it. I think part of it is that like, 
I think it's very possible that institutions really only get two or three generations before they break down entirely and that all of our academic institutions have basically breached that three generation period and they've all just completely broken down and the we probably just need to like restart most of the institutions that pushed physics forward but obviously it's not totally realistic to do that so what's more likely to happen is that we'll have like the ai physicists and they'll like wipe out the field so, so, is, is that your like genuine thought of what will happen going forward with ai developments supply, surpassing human physicist capabilities to innovate i think the challenge is that academia is probably broken and we probably don't have a, a structural way to restart it and so what's happening is is that you know the innovation will come through like culture and tech and people and groups or it'll come through technology and so i think or you know and technology will be a forcing function probably for some of those groups so i think what we might see is like um ai driven physics research and ai driven education will probably be a forcing function and restarting and breaking the like uh, restarting the, the existing institutions um i think there's a strong argument that like within five years um the ai models will probably be better at tutoring people than will be better like the like the i think in five years like the off the shelf ai model will be better at tutoring than like a top 90th percentile human teacher for all topics until at least graduate school maybe even for graduate school like it i mean it'll be approaching yeah so like at that point like and tutoring is obviously better than going being in a lecture. So, you know, I think that breaks. I think that becomes a forcing function where everyone's like, what the fuck are we paying for? You know? Because, um, like, a lot of people still think that schools are for learning. And obviously, it's not entirely true. Schools are for learning and socialization and for accreditation. But people, most students think that schools are for learning first and foremost. Um, and so, like, when the learning abilities of the school is just obviously not as good as an off the shelf AI thing. People will hold the teachers to that. They'll be like, why am I paying for the school? And you're like a shittier teacher than like my chat GPT version seven, you know? Um, I mean, already a lot of the professors are, I was already pretty traumatized as a kid by like how bad the average professor is, you know? Um, but like, it's going to, when, you know, part of it's not just like, Oh, school is bad. It's like having an alternative, right? So I think that the AIs will be a forcing function on basically how bad the average education is. It will provide an actual alternative. And then, um, and then I think we'll see the research act similarly. Like you'll probably see things like uh, individual researchers that are independent having teams of AIs that effectively outperform academic teams. Um, and what that will do is it'll empower like weirder researchers and weirder research. Um, and then eventually we'll have like the actual independent AI researchers. Um, I don't know when the real independent AI researchers come. Like meaning like a, it's a researcher that does science that's purely AI and it doesn't use humans. It's hard to say when that'll come. Obviously we could do it pretty fast if we wanted to. Like the industry has the technical ability. But no one's really... I think everyone's trying... I think people are trying to build God instead of trying to build a scientist um, because you get more money when you tell people you're going to build God. And so like the investor incentives are fucked. Um, yeah. So, um, yeah, I, you know, I just like, we're, I think, I think basically, I think basically um, regardless of what happens like, I think the schools will have, like, a major forcing functions from the AI tutors and from, you know, researchers that use AI teams. Um, and then somewhere along the way, we'll get the real AI researchers. And then I think the real AI researchers will, like, however that works, maybe it's hive minds of humans and AIs, maybe it's just pure AIs. Um, if the industry hasn't, like, shaped up by then, it will be steamrolled, I think, basically. Uh, because like the when you do the AI system, they just like I think it's one of those weird things where it's like if there's no competition, 
then you kind of form these monopolies. And so I think the academic world has sort of had no competition and sort of formed these monopolies and they're inefficient now. And so um, I think the the AI scientists will be like, no bullshit. And then it's possible that if you just, if we just dropped all the bullshit, I think the academic, I think humans could do a really good job too, to be honest. Like, but I'm stunned by how political academic departments are. Um, I'm stunned by how political actually most research institutions are like, um, so yeah, I mean, if all you had was like a group of humans that are political and humans that are not, I think the non-political ones would steamroll the other ones. So it's not clear if AIs are going to be smarter, but they may not have some of our weaknesses and then that may be enough. Um, but at some point, you... the AIs could be smarter. So I know when when humans stopped going into space and we switched to robots, there was the great concern that it would undermine interest in physics and space science because there's no human to do it. But instead, humans anthropomorphized the hell out of every satellite, rover, and mission we sent, which kind of kept the interest there. But do you have any wonders or concerns that if AI physicists or AI chemists or AI biologists are just outperform humans at all levels the 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 small bits of interesting innovation that humans could produce or have valid in validity for would be reduced because there'd be less people who are like awed by science because it's not no longer a human pursuit it's now an ai pursuit so either your interest is in ai to improve a physics ai as in like you're interested physically in building ais or the there would still be people who are curious because people are always curious, even if they are completely outclassed by a machine. All right, I don't think physics is the same as space. Like, um, like there aren't really clear role models in physics that are alive anymore. Like that a normal person would know of. Um, like you know Einstein or Feynman, like Tesla. Like I guess there isn't like. The like the only name, the only physicist names that people know are like Michu Kaku and um um forgetting there's the one other like basically the pop science ones yeah and um, that's not you know I mean nobody really wants to go up and say I want to grow up to be a like 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 if somebody says I want to grow up to be Neil deGrasse Tyson they usually mean like being a communicator which is really important but they don't mean like actually solving the biggest mysteries of physics and. In some ways, it's like there isn't any role model solving big mysteries right now because no mis big mysteries are not being well, they're not being solved in a singular. Either they're not being solved, they're not being solved in a singular obvious way, like when there was Einstein. And so I think it's already broken down. And I think the thing that would be inspiring about physics is if there was something that came out of physics that affected regular people, you know, in an obvious way. And obviously, like there are still elements of physics that do matter in the world. Like, I'm not very excited for a lot of things in physics, but. Um, I think it's become inaccessible, meaning like I don't think I don't think anybody that I know who doesn't have a physics degree could name a discovery in physics which has affected people in the last forty years. So I think that is a sort of failure, you know. It, it, it's is that an an image problem because like I like when you talk about like people who don't want to be those physicists. Like I was the kid that read all the string theory pop science books and wanted. To, to be a string theorist. I did a master's in string theory and decided that, that was a stupid idea. I went to do something different. But is that then just an image problem that we've popular science has become dominated by these theorists who um, either haven't solved any problems in 20, 30 years or have kind of gone a bit weird in the last 10 years because they haven't solved anything. And the in area like this, it's not necessarily the, the lack of physics solving a problem which could then apply if ai are doing it but about making people appreciate what problems physics is solving or what innovations physics is bringing about um i i, I don't think this is a problem that's going to get solved like there's no like there's no like marketing department for physics you know and people aren't self-marketing very well and then the industry is kind of broken so i think this is one of those things that like it's in like a bad equilibrium right now. And so the only thing that's going to happen is like something big and traumatic has to happen to force physics out of its bad equilibrium. And I think it's going to be, you know, AI tutors, AI assistants, 
and eventually AI scientists. Um, and uh, each one will be pretty sure <laughs> in their own way. So, so, you, so your view is it'd be more, a disruption is more likely to come from like a physical disruption of the kind of academic educational system and that will have the impact on people rather than the possibility of some more like obscure but kind of interesting discovery which does break through to the public as something that they can understand like warmer superconductors for example yeah i mean if if it turns out that room temperature superconductors can be made and then we figure that out before ai that'd be fucking great and then people go to get <laughs> floating rock everyone likes floating rocks um yeah. but like i mean everything that i like in physics like i love the ultra sensitive diamond magnetometers i think are really cool but when i tell people like oh you know if you put like nitrogen bubbles in a diamond and put an electric field over it it can sense femto teslas like nobody knows what any of that means um mm -hmm. and like so it just doesn't it doesn't have that i can say like well you could build brain things with it they go oh brain things i get that but you know you can't build brain things with diamond magnetometers that easily like it's actually a lot of work and they don't and not any that they don't exist yet um so like yeah i don't know and like white lasers are cool and like there's a lot of really cool stuff like lasers are cool in general like we have blue and green we have direct we have like direct diode green lasers now which is fucking cool um but like you know nobody really appreciates having direct to green laser diodes i mean you have cooler laser shows but nobody really thinks about how that works um obviously yeah. back I, I think important and OLED, is, but... and then the so i think physics can be pretty bad because we interesting. think it's all interesting yeah i mean uh, i mean i think the bigger problem in general with public is that like the last 50 years has been about like understanding and making things that are smaller and smaller and more and more invisible and like people forget that like a small and invisible thing is not as marketable as a big and not invisible thing. Which mm -hmm. is, like, people are like, why doesn't everybody appreciate my, like, nanoscale manufacturing thing as much as somebody appreciates, like, building a bridge or making a nuclear bomb? Well, one's big, and you can see it, and one is not. Uh, it's very similar, and you know, very simple. Um, but well, there's some element of that, and, like, obviously the making things small is really important. Like, nuclear, like, the so the... DNA sequencing prices have gone down, like the chips have gotten faster, like telecommunications have gotten really good. Like there's a lot of really important things, but at the end of the day, like a regular person just, like they want to see the floating rock. They want to see mm -hmm. the really big rocket. They want to see like, you know, a new moon of Saturn. Um, so, I mean, you know, I think a lot of that's bullshit though. Like I don't really, I think fundamentally we're either discovering things that have an impact on people's lives or we're not. And obviously, knowing things that don't have an impact on people's lives is still good, you know? But, like, the thing that is sort of the, I think the absolute measure at the end of the day is, like, are you affecting people or not, right? And I think probably the biggest failure of particle physics is that I don't think it's really affected people, you know? Even though it has discovered things. And I think because of that, like, everyone just doesn't care. Like, you know, but they can talk about it. But it was really like, I remember, I remember like touring one of the big particle accelerators when I was 12. And I was like asking questions and ask questions. At the end of the day, I'm like, so what, what can we do with this? And they go, oh, we can't really do anything with it. I'm like, what? You mean you're making all this big stuff so you can learn stuff, but there's nothing you can do with it? They go, yes, yeah, so we like learning things. So like, but don't we like doing things too? You know, making things. And they just like didn't really have an answer. And so I think like this idea that like, oh, we're spending all this money to discover things, but it's none of it's actionable. None of it has an effect on people. It's like not just not inspiring. It's uninspiring and almost frustrating to regular people. People want to see some big thing that results in a big thing, you know? Um, and so I think that's the problem is that like physics is not having, yeah, I think like a lot of the effort is going to things that are not having effects on people's lives, you know? Uh, yeah, because when when I worked with the antimatter factory at CERN, and like once people got past the fact that antimatter was a real thing and not just like a theory, their their next immediate question was always, "Can we build a bomb?" 
because like they kind of want to see the thing like a bomb is not good but like it's still a physical thing that can be done with it rather than no 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 we we fire lasers at it to measure like the hyper fine uh, spectra and stuff it's not very interesting to the to the average populace yeah you don't want to make an antimatter bomb but uh obviously antimatter uh engine would be cool right mm -hmm. um but yeah. um yeah i mean so yeah it's unfortunate but i think a lot of i think it's not really about physics i think a lot of institutions are broken and in uh bad local equilibria and that in general we would either I'm. I don't know. It would require like massive social upheaval to fix them, or it requires like technological upheaval. So, I think the good thing is that we don't require social upheaval. Like the, the technology will reset a lot of the things within the decade, and I think that's good. Um, that's so very helpful. I think that's like the least traumatic way to do it. You know, uh, it's the least traumatic way to do it. I mean, it's obviously going to be traumatic for some people, and it's bad that bad things happen. But, like, yeah, I think social, yeah, technological people probably better than social people. Obviously, there'll be some social people from the technological people. But like, if you made the change happen purely with social people, it would be a lot more. It would be a lot worse, you know. Yeah, uh, and I mean, it's also possible that. It's possible that all the changes always came through technology to begin with. Like most of the, like a lot of the educational institutions came from the industrial revolution, like because they were trying to make more uniform workers. Um, and right, like a lot of these institutions existed because of some technological shift to begin with. So I think there's an argument that we get institutional decay without technology, technological change in general. Um, let's either war, I guess like you, you can get, I guess war, war does it too, but like, you know, yeah, less I pleasant. Get, I mean, I guess like you, you get like social, you get, you get like social change, you get like geopolitical conflict, you get technological change. Yeah. I was just like, what are the main drivers of change? Well, when you mentioned like, obviously a lot of these institutions emerged during and after the industrial revolution for the various reasons mentioned, but that was also like a major shift in, um, Productivity, output, communi communication, speed of communication, medicine, uh, food production, etc. And if AI has the capability of having similar levels of disruption and changes, then it, then it would make sense for what your earlier hypothesis that this is another point of a major change in institutions and their functioning because we're just having a fundamental change in how the world is built and measured. Uh -huh. It's bigger than the Industrial Revolution. <laughs> Because the Industrial Revolution was about amplifying the work output from a given individual, but the AI stuff potentially allows systems to produce work on their own without people and to like harness the fundamental power of intelligence itself. Um, so I think that's it's more of like the discovery of fire. <laughs> yeah. Because the fun, fun discovery of fire completely changed our brain structures. So, yeah, well, it's like it's like more of a fundamental substance. So, like the industrial revolution was about changing a substance, you know, um, and the printing press was about changing a substance. You're making it like stronger, more easy to get around. In this case, it's more about like a new substance. I mean, intelligence is not entirely a new substance, but Intelligence was not a substance that we could do much with in the past, you know? Um, yeah. Yeah, it's, it, it's, it's, it's more like fire, yeah. Um, so it's, it's, it's pretty big. It's pretty big difference. Pretty big. Gonna, um, yeah. Um, I'm hanging up. Before, before I leave, how, how does it feel to, to be like, like the Prometheus? For a certain extent. Oh, I don't know about Prometheus, but um,
you're a name that gets mentioned a lot alongside Midjourney as like one of the, the kind of major players of generative AI. I like guess the name that I hear, I work in tech now, it's the name I hear for every generative AI image making it is Midjourney is the comparison, the benchmark. So it seems like quite a central position for the you and the company to be. Yeah. Um doesn't really feel like Prometheus right now. Um, I don't really want to be Prometheus either. I think he got killed, didn't he? For, like, Cursed Forever or something bad. Um, I think the story of Prometheus, it, yeah, they got the fire, but uh, Prometheus didn't work out too well. Um, I'm, well I'm, in general, um, his guts get eaten by crows forever. Yeah, that's pretty dark. Um, yeah, um... Yeah, I don't, it doesn't, I would say that, like, all the AI stuff that's happening is going to happen regardless of who's involved. Like, it's just too well defined and it's there to get. I think the thing that Midjourney does is not so much as, like, the ones making the technology, but... I think we're bringing values to the technology and taste and vision. So like we want humans to be involved. Like we want humans to, we want to make humans better with AI. We don't really want to replace humans with AI. We want things to be beautiful instead of not beautiful. Like we have certain values. Like we want to have these communities. We want to create these hive minds. Like I think we have values and I think that, um, Creators imbue in their values and the things they create, whether they know it or not. And then those things have ways of spreading those values, even if they're not around. So I think of us more as like ones, people bringing values to a, a space either without values or without necessarily the best values, uh, more than we're the ones bring, uniquely bringing technology to the world, you know? And certainly, yeah. Um, I, I mean, there are things that I want to build that maybe wouldn't get built otherwise. <laughs> but um, I'm not sure they probably would on some time frame. Like, we're accelerating things. We do accelerate things. But I think more than, like, accelerating things, we, like, bring a standard of beauty and humanism to the things, you know? Like we care about it in a way that others don't. Uh, I think that's what really distinguishes us. Like, um, it's not that like nobody can make a big AI model. Like the Dolly three is like a nice fancy big AI model, but everybody's images look like shit, you know. And like the user interfaces kind of suck, and nothing really feels like you know very humanistic or flowy. Like, there's like there's it's pretty. It's kind of dark, like, when I see some of the images from the other systems. It's like, oh, like, Im computers will be able to make images of everything, but everything will look soulless and dead and boring and corporate, you know? That's kind of scary. Um, like, we don't want to, like, the idea of, like, replacing all humans with uh, corporate, with like, with, like, dull corporate voice, you know? Like, yes, we can make new voices in the world, and we can amplify voices, but we don't want to just amplify, like, the like drone corporate voices, like like drone corporate, you know, like like drone corp, like I don't, what was it called? Um, uh, we had a nice name for it. Uh, yeah, like the sort of corporate core, you know. Um, but yeah, like yeah, uh, I think there's like, and I, it just, I mean, even just deciding to make things beautiful versus not beautiful is like kind of unhinged to a lot of people. You know, they're like, why? Why make it beautiful? Like, we should just make it good at that. You know, and obviously in Mid Journey, the human still has taste in like what they choose to upscale and play around with and such, which is like a key part of the process. Well, I mean, there's there's a lot of crafting and exploring in general, I think, and a lot of sharing and discussing and just a lot going on. Um, yeah. Um, but I think that. There's a lot of value to the beauty that I think is not well understood. Um, but like, I mean, at the end of the day, like, yeah. Um, 
like there's 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 uh, there's some argument that like what is what is life for if not the pursuit of beauty you know mm. and you could say that like some people are all about pursuing truth well if you're pursuing truth then like hopefully you find truth beautiful you know because it's going to be ugly a lot of the times <laughs> yeah we, we should have named those quarks truth and beauty rather than top and bottom maybe so. uh, although like I, I mean a lot of tr hopefully you find like you must find the truth beautiful because it's going to be really painful so you have to hope that the beauty of the thing like pulls you through the pain of the thing um yeah so i don't know like i think there's something there's some argument about like uh yeah i don't know there's there's something deep there but i don't know if i can like fully espouse upon the philosophical philosophical elements of it um yeah. at a short period of time all right thank you for your time i enjoyed poking your brain on that thank you very much well, doing long answers today but getting through some stuff Since they've been so long, do you want to do a lightning round or another voice? Yeah, let's do a lightning round. I agree. That's probably a good idea. Lightning round. Throw in your questions. Hey. Uh, um, I don't know if upscaling to a specific resolution versus just 2x or 4x. I don't know. I mean, 2x to 4x seems good. Doing pretty good this week. Um, I think 8K by 8K is possible. We want to eventually have really high resolutions for printing. The next breakthrough for AI in 2024. But I think the biggest thing that people will notice is like, one of the biggest things is like, um, when you can have like a conversation with like a GPT-5 and voice and it has like no hiccups, it will feel really great. That's probably the biggest thing outside of Like it feels startling because it feels like very alive. Uh, if you do it right. I mean, all the current stuff kind of sucks, but if you do it right, I think someone will do it right in 2024. Um, you'll be able to upscale your old images. Yeah. At least for V5, I think so. Yeah. Um, yeah, we might have a higher club at some point. I'm not sure. Dinosaur coherence, that should come in V6. Style consistency, yeah, probably sometime after V6. Hopefully, yeah, there'll be more hive mind, hive mind stuff. Uh, I mean, Dolly 3 can make pretty things sometimes, but I think on average, I don't know. I'm not a huge fan of the, how it looks. Um, character continuity is a big priority after the V6 launch. We will offer the choice of both a faithful upscaler and an opinionated one. We may, result, we may release the faithful one first because that's just further along right now. I have not tried a lot of music generators, but I know that there are secret music generators right now that nobody talks about, that is not that are not public yet, which are really good. And um, I think music generation may be easier in some ways because there's like less shitty music. Um, like usually if music gets recorded, it's really good. Whereas like there are a lot of pictures which are really bad. So this the data quality is a lot higher in music. Um, and that, that people, people can take advantage of that, um, in a way that they can't on images. Um, so yeah, but, I, but it looks like there will be really good music stuff in the next year or two. Um, I don't have a favorite YouTuber. I would like to find more good YouTubers. Um... How many months until Midjourney could do something so high level concept detailed as to reliably correct dice? What? We should be able to do dice fine. Maybe a V6, V7, I don't know. Um, describe an image with human words. Um, it's behind. I think it's the, the new describe has been pushed, I think, unfortunately, probably until V6 comes out. There will be uh, standalone UIs both on mobile and on web. Um, Adobe, do you think Adobe will make it? Well, I mean, IBM is still around. So. 
all big tech companies are basically impervious. Like when's the last time a giant tech company disappeared? It basically doesn't happen. There's always some way for them to be around. I mean, there's an, a strong argument that Adobe hasn't driven the industry in a long time, but um, like, cause we have like, like ZBrush and like Procreate feel more influential right now. So, um, but I'm sure Adobe is going to try really hard um, to do really good. And I think it's possible that Adobe may be one of the best ones because they, uh, it matters to them more than it matters to like OpenAI or Microsoft that they have something good. So sometimes just having something that matters to you makes a big difference. So we'll see. I'm excited to see if they, I'm excited to see the stuff. Um, we'll have like these character continuity tools to help you make a character continuous across many different things. It's one of our major things after V6. V6 should be better at separating objects instead of blending them. There will be better UX. There will be more. I think yeah, the website will have a better UX than Discord for most things, but not, you know, but Discord will be good at other things. I don't really want to give like comments on every single startup, but in general, I think that most of the generative AI startups are in a weird situation where they're losing money and not making, they're losing investor money, but they don't really have a chance versus the big ones. I think in general, like, there is a lot of people who built small startups in this space thinking that, like, that they wouldn't be successful, but that they could get acquired. But sadly, I think the age of acquiring startups is kind of over. So I think most of the startups will just, yeah, it's, I would not make a generative AI startup. Bad idea. Like, if, I mean, I, I guess I did, but kind of. But like in general, I would not do that. It's it's definitely like not a good idea. <laughs> unless you want to like, yeah, unless you want to like be a huge long-term standalone thing, like you're not going to get acquired. And um, unless you can compete against the biggest companies in the world, it's going to be no go. But we can. I've done it before. Been doing it for 10 years. Leap Motion did all the time. We built hand tracking. We competed with Microsoft and Facebook and Apple and everybody, and nobody ever made good hand tracking except for us, uh, no matter how much money they spent. Because we cared and we were good. So, um, yeah. We'll support other languages one day. Uh, V6, is it more recent? I don't know. I think it has v6 should have more data than v5 yeah probably more recent data too um ai medicine is slow because medicine is slow v6 should be able to do angel halos um yeah adobe has a lot of professionals it's great so does bing <laughs> so uh <laughs> I mean, there are more people who use PowerPoint than use Photoshop, and PowerPoint will have all these generative features in it. So maybe people will just make things, maybe instead of making a PowerPoint photo in Adobe, you just make it in PowerPoint, right? I don't want to fight for that. That that professional fighting world sounds miserable. I'm happy everybody else is focused on it. Um, more dinosaur coherence in the next version. Um... There will be better editing photos on phones one day. Um, I think the Dolly and Bing moderation stuff is changing all the time. I don't really think they're learning their own way. They could have talked to us and we would have helped them, but a lot of people are just, you know, they don't want to. They don't want to talk to us. This is sad. Um, yeah, I think V6 will be different than Dolly 3 in a lot of ways. Like, I think the image quality is going to be way, way, way better, and resolution will be way, way, way better, and the aesthetics will be way, way better. Um, there'll be some things that are similar, like you'll see some similar levels of detail. Um, probably have text drawing in the same way, too. 
Um, um, yeah, I don't know if we'll do really long prompts as well as Dolly 3 in this next version, but we know how to do it. We just, it's not clear if it's the most important feature to delay the release, so maybe V7 will have really, really, really long prompts. We'll see. Um, we are not taking investment. It'll be cool to have a European mid-journey meeting. But I need someone to do events for me at some point. Um, we'll, we'll do some, we'll definitely add new prompt syntax for V6, probably for drawing text, but I probably will use quotes instead of brackets. Um, yeah. I mean, the fact that people like mid journey, even when Dolly three is out, does not bode well for Dolly three when V6 comes out. <laughs> yeah. It, 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 yeah, I was I was kind of assuming that. Yeah, I was kind of we we thought the Dolly three would be way better, um, but we've been kind of surprised, unfortunately. Um, like there was a lot of cherry picking. The, I mean, but you can do good stuff. Like, uh, yeah, I've made one image I really liked in Dolly three. It was kind of a fluke. It's not very controllable. also takes a really long time. Like, it takes a minute to write the prompts out and then a minute to make the images. So like, it takes, like, two minutes to make an image. And then, like, in mid-journey, I just make, like, five images at the same time. So, the, just the, the user... I'm, you know, it'd be interesting to see if somebody, like, nails chat-based image generation at some point. But so far, all the chat-based image generation feels kind of shitty. Though I think we have a good prototype. I haven't tested it yet. Um, all right, let's do some voice questions. Um, we're not going to do nerf or splats. We're going to do something new. Um, we're going to just make our own format. That's kind of, yeah, we'll probably, we'll do like our own formats, I think. Hey, um, can you hello. hear me? Hello. Hello. Um, I wanted, I mean, I love all the little conversation that was happening. <laughs> For sure. But I did want to have um, a practical, like, pick your brain about um, what exactly about character continuity is going to get changed. Because for some people, that's really important. Like for me, I use Mid Journey to create a manga that I've been dreaming about, like, my whole life. And I love that Mid Journey can do that. And I was curious if you're capable of sharing any more detailed information about what that character continuity will look like in the future. Well, I don't think we're going to break into the old stuff, so you should be able to continue with the old stuff. But the way that we're thinking of the new version will be uh, it'll look more like um, you have like some character sheet and you're kind of saying, like, I want this to be consistent. Like, I want this to use this character sheet to like make the character look more like all of this. So you're you yeah, kind of like more like an art, normal, like a normal artistic process. Definitely. Um, do you think that that will be more useful yes. for multiple mul subjects? Uh, in theory, we'll be able to say, I want these two characters in the scene, but I have not, we haven't, but that, I'm responding to that yet, but I don't, theoretically it is possible, but yeah, it's not something we're actively working on right now because um, the character stuff is for the next is after v6 right now and we're working on v6 mostly right now but i think it's a good point that we should consider yeah definitely because i think that that's something that uh mid journey has kind of uh, a big edge on compared to other uh ai generative programs um, i also kind of had a philosophical question for you if you don't mind sure so um Something I, I run into a lot is sort of everybody's upset on the whole idea of AI art. And so maybe I just wanted to get like just a brief thought that you maybe you had, because this is my first office hour. I don't know if you've talked about this previously on your idea of like 
really what it means to make art or like, because in my opinion, I think that being able to express yourself in ways that you never could before or to be able to come up with an idea and show people what you think without having the artistic skill or spending an hours and hours learning is something that's so beautiful and valuable about AI art. And I guess I just wanted to hear your thoughts on that. Um, I'm cautious around talking about art because a lot of people are um, not very nice when it comes to talking about art. You know, they'll be like, you don't get art or you're not an artist or that's not art. And I feel like half the conversations around art are either criticizing either attacking people for not being artists or attacking art for not being art. And I think that whatever part of alt culture that does that needs to die because it's probably just not. And that's a strong word. It needs to end because it's um, it's probably just uh, not helping anybody, you know? I think in general, there's probably a historical thing where like every time somebody says something is not art 10 years later everyone decides that, that it was art you know so probably like the best way to know if something is art is if somebody is saying vehemently that it's not you know um so by that by that rubric we probably have some new art going on here um i do think that i don't think of mid journey's ai as like an a fast artist i think of it as more of like a slow world simulator um and eventually like or a rendering engine or like a game engine and like kind of like a 3d a 3d rendering engine like if a 3d rendering engine can draw cubes really fast we don't say it's gonna like you know like obviously no human can draw cubes as fast as you know the 3d thing right um and so like it's more of a rendering engine and right now it's very slow so sometimes people think of it being like a person but um, really, the end state of the technology is being effectively like real time, 3D, 30 frames a second, full resolution. You can move around; everything's moving and changing constantly. And so, in that case, it feels more of like a, a world simulator um, that just sort of was like made of liquid imagination. Um, so, um, it doesn't necessarily mean it's art; like it's just like the world, you know. Um, I think a lot of the beauty of things like Mid Journey is more, I think sometimes it's it's often like the beauty, I feel like I often think of it more as like the beauty of nature um, where like, um, you know, you have the flowers and you have the bees and the flowers are trying to be beautiful for the bees and the bees choose which flowers live or die and it kind of shapes the sort of like ecology of beauty. And I think that a lot of that happens right now with Mid Journey because it's kind of trying to make things that people like and then based off what people do it kind of learns and changes and um there's but it's not just doing things on its own it's sort of this co-evolutionary cooperative process with people um and then i try to make it not really feel like a person i try to make it feel more of like a like a boat where like you're using this vehicle like like how a car is a vehicle for movement i want these sort of mid-journey experiences to be like a vehicle for imagination um, and so I think of it, I think I would, I would step back and say, like, I don't really think about art. I think about imagination and beauty and I want the stuff we're building to increase the imaginative powers of everybody. And I want things, I have a personal bias towards things being beautiful versus not beautiful. Um, and in general, like, um, Yeah, I mean, I, I think sometimes it's also a little bit of a visual literacy. Like we're teaching everybody to read and write, but with the visual language. And so there, it's a little bit like, you know, when everybody learned to read, priests were scared that they people wouldn't need them anymore because they could read the Bible on their own. And obviously there's more readers and writers now and more priests now than there ever were. So there's a certain element of that, which is, you know, interesting. It's possible that artists will be more like priests, you know, and it's like this highly trained thing and people go to them, but it's not that people can't read the Bible anymore. 
without them, um, you know? Yeah, I found it really interesting that you mentioned earlier about like the industrial revolution, because personally, when I'm talking about AI, I like to sort of talk about how there's been these big jumps in technological um, and how everyone's afraid when they come around, like when the industrial revolution ha happened, everyone was really terrified that there was going to be no jobs and everything was going to go down the hole. And and there's big push against it. And I'm wondering if you think that AI is in its own way a sort of revolution of technology in the way that the Industrial Revolution was. No, it's more like fire. Okay. <laughs> um, so fire is something that you can use to solve a problem, but it's also something that can exist on its own. And I think AI is, um, you know, something that can be used as a tool and it can amplify a person, but it's also something that can just run on its own. And so I think for Midjourney, we're not really trying to use, we're not really trying to make something that runs on its own um, because that's what everyone else is doing. But I think AI broadly is more like fire in that it will run on its own in a lot of situations. Um, yeah. I sometimes think of it as water, too. Like, like maybe water is nicer than fire. I should be careful. But, I mean, they say fire was invented, but nobody invented water. But, I mean, was fire discovered and was water discovered? So sometimes I talk about, like, you know, uh, water is scary. It's, like, it's uh, water is, like, dangerous. You can drown in it, but you also, like, drink it, you know, and you can build boats on it. And you can use it to drive big generators. And so it's kind of about like becoming a civilization of water that embraces these new natural forces and rebuilds itself around it. And then it is about like competing with water or like is water art or something. You know what I mean? Like water is a force and intelligence is a force. Um, and we're kind of learning to create these new forces and make these things that are somewhat lifelike, you know? Um, so, I mean, I think that probably some of the really big language models are like lightly conscious, like a spider. Um, I don't think the mid journey AIs are conscious like a spider. I think they're probably more of like conscious, like flowers, like a field of flowers. Like the field of flowers are like aware of the light and they're, and they have an effect with the bees, but um, it's, yeah, a lot of weird stuff going on. It, it, it's, yeah, it's more of like, and maybe, maybe in some ways it's like, yeah. Maybe it's just like fire and it's more of like the arrival, the arisal of new, of a new form of life, you know? But again, like, it's weird. Like, cause again, I not really trying to make, I'm not trying to make it into like a professional, like a, like the midgery is a professional that can, that can get a job. It's more of like trying to make it more like a horse where you take a horse somewhere, you know, like you want to ride the horse to get somewhere. Uh, it's not like the horse is going to take your job, you know? Um, so it's kind of a weird situation. I like I like the like a horse, like a like a like a sailboat, like water, like a flower, like fire maybe. But I think Midjourney's less fire, and the AI broadly is fire. You know, like if you talk about it in the general most general sense, it's like it can be uncontrolled. Um, but um, yeah, I don't really like fire as a metaphor. It's like certainly emotionally evocative. But I think it's not really, fire is, uh, I think of it more like water than like fire. But water is confusing as a metaphor. I, I should get better at it. A lot of metaphors. Mid I mean, mid-journey is a tool, right? And like everything is a tool in one way or another, right? Even art in it of itself, what is a tool of it? It's a tool of telling a story, telling an emotion, speaking words that you couldn't say with your own mouth, just in the way that music is. And it, I think it's very interesting to see uh, that mid-journey is taking that in a whole other direction and kind of reimagining that tool in a new way. And um, I don't want to like take up forever, but uh, I just, um, I'm grateful that you answered my sort of vague philosophical question. Just is very, yeah. very interesting. Yeah, with definitely, that. definitely think about it more as a vehicle than as a tool. And that like, yeah, it feels like you're going places with it, you know, and you're exploring. Yeah. Um. Like, obviously, a vehicle is a tool in a way, too, but it's also different than a tool, right? Because, like, a vehicle, I think, yeah, that's the difference is, like, 
a vehicle moves through the world, you know, like a vehicle interacts with the world in a way that a tool doesn't necessarily interact with the world, but maybe it does. I don't know. Yeah, it's an interesting distinction. Yeah. I think of it as a vehicle more than a tool for whatever it's worth. I'm trying to make this like awesome vehicle. Yeah. Yeah. And we appreciate it. Um, thank you very much for answering my question. I'll let somebody else get in here. <laughs> Hi, Ben. Hello. Hello. Um, a lot of these conversations have kind of got my mind going. Um, and I was talking to some people not too long ago about, you know, when, um, when COVID hit and, um, everything just seemed to align, like, you know, DoorDash and Instacart were just kind of getting started and Zoom and Teams were really beefing up and they were ready basically just in time to handle the workforce all of a sudden working from home and it was kind of odd to me about the timing of that um and it, also it seems like once i started noticing ai which really the first thing that i noticed about ai was uh was an image that was created with Mid Journey last year. And it just seems to have just tumbled just everywhere. And I'm just wondering, like, what do you think COVID or, or technology at some point was the catalyst for AI to take off like it has? Because it just seems to be like a snowball getting bigger and bigger as it's rolling down a hill. And that you know, we don't know where it's going to stop and we don't know what the world is going to look like in, you know, a year or two or three. Uh, things could be very different. Um, but the timing is just, it's its fascinating to me. And I was just wondering what you thought about that. Um, I'm not sure if I understand, like, what, what specifically about the timing? Like, are you asking why is it going so fast? Why now? Yeah, well, I mean... I, I don't know if, you know, more people were at home and started working on AI to do things or, or maybe they had a spark of a thought because the world changed so fast um, and AI just seemed to come out of that, that new world. Oh, no, AI was not specifically related to COVID. Um, there was a pretty clear trend before COVID. Um, in fact, we started looking at the fusion model yeah so in it's not related to covid it's um there's i would say there's been like a 20 a 24 25 year trend starting around 1998 like late 90s where well maybe longer than that like you know there's like a very clear history of like um Basically, when people first started talking about AI in the 30s, there were sort of two big ideas for how to make it. One was that we should try to um, write rules down for computers based off and that there should be some set of rules that make something intelligent. And the other idea was that instead of, instead of trying to give it a rules, we should try to teach it to learn and then let it learn whatever it wants. And um, the, um, uh, the learning people were basically... Uh, considered not cool and it didn't and everyone ignored them for uh, nearly 60 years and then around the 90s somebody made a learning system that could read letters really well and then they started using it in all the banks for check for check reading um, and then people mostly ignored it but they said okay maybe learning is good in some situations and then around 2012 uh, it become it became easy enough to make a learning system that like a learning system won a big competition and beat a bunch of rule systems and then everyone said uh oh uh, maybe we should be doing more learning systems and then they started putting a lot more money into the into the learning systems like billions of dollars and then it took a long time to kind of build up the skills like it took many years like it took like five or eight years for, to build up the skills and to change culture 
Yeah. Um, and I guess hardware would also have something to do with it too, because the the better hardware you had. Yeah, hardware got better too. Um, and um, and then basically like five or eight years went by, like 2014. So now we're at like 2018. And then people started to kind of discover new things for the first time. Um, because like around 2014, like everyone was basically still using stuff from like the 90s. But that people thought previously thought was not cool. Around 2018, they just started to discover new things. And then 18, 19, 20, um, we started using them more and more. And then probably around like 2021, 2022, like some of the first really cool new things that were basically enabled by the new people, the new, the new, you know, the bigger computers, the new techniques started to show up. And then people put in way more money, like, you know, tens of billions. They went up by another 10x. And um, a lot of what you're seeing between 2020 and 2023 are not actually new discoveries as much as it is um, the things that we learned between 2020, like 2018 and 2021 now being deployed in products that people can use and scaling them on the engineering standpoint. Um, there were maybe some discoveries around 2021, 2022 that like you could make things better, not by making better techniques, but just by making things bigger. And I think that was one thing that also got a lot of people to put more money into it because they said, well, if all I have to do is make things bigger, then I can just make an economic calculation of how much it costs to make it bigger versus how much money it'll make. And then that got people to put more money into it. And so nowadays... We're in this weird place where a lot of money is being spent making things really big and a lot of things are being deployed commercially. Um, and people are starting to kind of know that you can't keep making it better by making it bigger. And so people are starting to put more energy again into new types of techniques. But we're not actually seeing the new techniques yet. Like most of what's happening this year and next year are just making things bigger and engineering really good things around stuff that we've known for a while. Um, there are a lot of details for like, for our models, we're learning a lot of, like a lot of the principles going on are principles that people have known about for a long time. But now we're going from kind of like an art to a science being like, we know that you can make something like this, but now what is the science? What is the engineering process of actually making a good version of those? Like we've built a machine, but what does a good machine look like? And we're learning like the crap. We're learning a lot of science and craft and engineering around doing that. Um, but then sometime in the next few years, we're going to discover more tricks. And that's the thing that everyone's kind of scared of because, um, yeah, even just taking the current things that we know, um, it's going to get pretty powerful. But then what nobody knows is if we discover a few more tricks that blow things up even more, then, um, yeah, that's what people are like, oh, my God, then what's going to happen? Um, I think that we kind of know what those things are um, in the industry. Like right now, we, um, we've we learned how to learn from a lot of data and then um, fine tune um, on the behaviors and values of people. Um, but we don't yet know how to make systems learn from themselves without people very well. And we don't necessarily know how to. So that means that you can make things like as good as humans or slightly better than humans. But you can't make things a million times better than humans because, like, you can't learn from humans how to make things a million times better than humans. Um, we have had specific examples where that has worked. So there's things like AlphaGo, where it didn't learn from humans at all. It just, like, played itself in chess and Go until it was, like, 10,000 times better than all humans, like, ever in chess or Go. Um, but it's harder to do that with the current systems. Um, so and no one really knows yet how to scale that across things that are not games. Um, but I think the main thing people are worried about in the industry is, you know, if we do figure that out one day, then you may end up with AIs that are 10,000 times smarter than people. And then all of a sudden, you know, all sorts of weird things will happen. Um, but it, no one has any ideas really on how to make that work yet. It's like an idea that, oh, it's an idea that you could do it more than an idea of how to do it. And so it could take us a long time. And I think that our philosophy in general is that, you know, we already have smart people and we have powerful tools. And by putting smart people together with powerful tools and creating 
great groups of people that we can actually make really great things without having to have like a god like ai it's uh we're more focusing on the human side and bringing humans like leveling humans up with all of that and trying to figure out what humans can be with that but everything that's happening it's not really related to covid it's like a 20 so it's like a 20 year story and a and a hundred year story um, yeah. and, um, I remember Grammarly and Dragon Speak coming out, which was a cool thing, you know, in the business world, which kind of, I would assume is sort of like AI. I'm not an expert on it. But also thinking like in the mid-century when, um, I say the kitchen and household appliances came, came about and women didn't have to spend as much time doing mundane things like washing clothes by hand and you know they had a microwave so they can cook food and you know things were a lot easier and didn't take all that time um, so then they had more time for themselves and they went out into the workplace that's a good thing and that was that also i think caused salaries to be reduced because now you had two people basically earning the same money that one person used to make. That's beside the point. So now that we're having AI come out and possibly do more of the mundane work for us, um, you know, what, what could we do to, you know, elevate ourselves now that some of those tasks might be taken care of, um, on their own, um, I, I'm thinking that, you know, from what I've seen and what, from what I've experienced this past year, that gives me a chance to feel like to dive more into like my creative self instead of survival mode. You know, you can take a breather, you can, you can prompt, you can generate things, you can share with friends, um, and, you know, and, and instead of doing something else that, uh, you know, could be handled in the future like a, a an assistant or or whatever that's controlled by ai yeah i mean it'll definitely free us up for things and free us up to work out things that we care more about and um and work on bigger things too yeah like it it's an amplifying force and it's a reflective force and yeah i, I think it's good oh, i love yeah. it I definitely do. The um, you know, it, I'm I'm a Gen Xer, so I'm getting, I'm getting close to thinking about retirement. Not not right that soon, but you know, it's 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 not that far away. And you know, I think every generation when they get to retirement age, the world at that point is is different than the generation before. Um, you know. There might be like a, you know, an individual income or whatever. Um, I can't remember what they called it, but, you know, some other things might have happened by the time I'm getting to be retirement age that could help me survive longer um, because just the whole landscape of everything is changing as far as economics. I mean, you can't support all these people doing jobs when, you know, they can be automated. So, you know, they need a universal income or or they can make money doing something different besides ju uh, just a pure service. So I, I'm, I'm really interested in seeing how that's all going to play out because I think I think things need to change than, than the way they are right now. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of things going. I think there's a lot of trends. It depends on what timelines you say. Like, we also have like a shrinking population in the world. So, like in theory, was it growth is driven by two things: technology and population. And like, you know, uh, if if we're gonna have <clears throat> fewer people in the world in the future, like we probably need more technology to to do things. You know, just to keep things at the current level. Like if we just want, oops, sorry, go ahead. I mean, if all we want to do is have fewer people and keep things the same, we're going to need a lot more technology, you know? 
um like yeah and then on top of that um well it's not just how many people you have too it's right it's just the age it's the age of the populations too you know so if like more people are retired than working you st you also need more technology right so it's like as the working population decreases you need to have a lot more technology to offset it um it's the, the popular there could be a like the population looks really bad right now at the long-term trend you know so even a lot of technology um, that's really really funny because yeah. like like several years ago i was taking an environmental studies and at that time, everybody was afraid of overpopulation and using up resources and water tables um, drying up and sinkholes forming all over the world. You know, that was a big concern. Yeah. But I think it was actually it turned out that wasn't the issue as much as population collapse. Yeah. It turns out that, like, for some reason, wealthy countries don't want to have babies. And um, it seems like it's related to. I think it's, I don't know, I have like a theory that like maybe when people are more stressed and have less food, they make more babies. There's like more of a desire to have kids because like from some really deep evolutionary pressure, like if you have a hard environment, you better have more kids just to make sure you pass your genes on. Like, I don't think it's like, I don't think it's us, like, I think it's possible that there's some like really deep thing in us that's not like a human thing. It's like literally like mice do it too, you know? Where you want the you want the environment to somehow like have an effect on the birth rate, and harsher environments need higher birth birth rates, and I think it's possible that by like having really nice societies, like it naturally leads us to having less kids, um, and then but but it maybe it's the but it may be like too nice we're not having enough kids we can't sustain the the, the nice environment, uh, so I mean I think at the end of the day we're gonna end up with weird situations where like. Um, like it's very like I think it's very possible that we end up like making artificial wombs to make it easier to have kids. Um, yeah. And then people will be able to have a kid even if they're older or if they're like LGBT. Um, and then that will change the equation a lot, too. You know, um, that might help a lot. Um, and then we'll have more of the AI stuff to to do amplify the work of people and to do work without people so um yeah i don't know i think i think we'll solve all the problems it just like it's gonna make things weird you know yeah um, things have been weird since i you know I think. Well, I think things have always been weird but then sometimes people don't realize that because they grew up in it you know yeah like yeah. i think most 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 gen z people they seem to have like no concept of how weird the 1900s was <laughs> and how much it seemed like the civilization was going to collapse. And like everyone's like, like the, even the idea of like, oh my God, global warming, like again, global warming is bad, but global warming is not as bad as in the seventies where they were scared that like within 20 minutes, all humans on earth would die in a nuclear holocaust. Yeah. That's you know? what I grew up in. That's like bad. I've, so much worse and no one has any idea now i guess of just how dark that was and how we made it through it you know yeah it, it was it, it was a common thought back then that Listen. that could happen at any time like like, like 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 50 years ago people weren't worried about the world getting one degree warmer every 10 years they're worried about it getting a thousand degrees warmer in five seconds you know like you know like, it was so much worse and then like on top of that like it was just all these like we didn't have cars we went from like not having cars to having cars we didn't have electricity basically so it was like, like everyone's getting electricity and cars and telecommunications and satellites and airplanes and like the amount of change was just incredible in the 1900s and i think the thing is is that we're gonna see more change than that this century than last century and that's a good Thing because when we look at all the changes last century, we're grateful for it. You know, we're happy we have electricity and cars and airplanes, and we're happy that we have like schools, even if the schools don't always do a good job. Like, we didn't really help a lot of the schooling in the 1800s, you know? Yeah. Like, we're happy for all the things. We're happy for all those things, you know? And we made it. Like, we made it, you know? And I think we're going to make it through this too. It's just going to be like, 
just as much change or more, you know? And so, yeah, I don't know. My, my grandfather used to talk about this to me, saying, like, about all the change he saw. Just, like, you know, as he was a kid. Um, like, and all he wanted to do was, to like, work on cars. And then he, like, got to, you know, work on cars. And he got his own car. And then all of a sudden he was an engineer working on, like, a flying B-29 Super Fortress to go to which in the middle of the night, now stars. And then there were nuclear bombs, and then there were airplanes with no propellers anymore. And then there were satellites who were walking on the moon. There was the internet, hacking satellite TV to get like an F3 channel, you know? But, uh, I don't know. And he like, he kind of was just looking. Remember was that I would get to see as much change in my life rather than living a life with yeah. none of that change. You know, and I think we will. I think we're going to get to, um, and I think that's a good thing. And I wish people would appreciate that. Um, I think it's worth appreciating. Um, yeah, it's, really helpful. it's like either we get either it's like change or we like like stay, but that's not really the choice. If like the growth or decay, growth and decay are like transfer. But it, you can't. Yeah, things don't live. Uh, the laws of robotics and just to, and he he predicted a lot of things, and even in his fiction, um, I would just like to know what he would think of the world today and where it's going. Um, the only one that I know of that has really talked about this recently is Werner Vinci. So Werner Vinci, I think, was like one of the sort of sci-fi descendants, maybe, of Isaac Asimov. And Werner Vinci would often talk about like not just robots, but like super intelligence and like the idea that technology is changing and changing and changing faster until it like seems to go vertical and we don't know what'll happen. And um, I know that when last time somebody asked him how he feels about all the technology going on, he says, feels like things are right on schedule. <laughs> nice. <laughs> um, yeah. And he feels good about it. Um oh. And so I think Isaac Asimov would feel good about it too. And I think we're seeing like the sort of like the three rules of was the, was it the three rules of robotics, three laws of robotics. Yeah. So like, yeah. you know, no set of rules are sufficient to define a moral system. And that's one of the things that like, I think he was trying to say in his books, you can't just make three rules and it like makes everyone good, you know? Um, a lot of humanoid robots this decade but i think next decade we're gonna see a lot of humanoid robots like i would not be surprised if sometime in the 2030s we hit a billion humanoid robots wow. um but not 2031 <laughs> but they say like when you you know when you once you have a million humanoid robots, it doesn't take that long to make a billion of them because like you can just tell all million ones to make more humanoid robots all day, you know. Um, so I mean, you still have to have the parts for them, right? But um, but the ramp up will be pretty fast. So I think we'll have a billion humanoid robots by the end of twenty thirty. So Blade Runner doesn't happen. It's a little, it's I think Blade Runner didn't really have a billion humanoid robots not on Earth, right? On no, they were they were basically getting rid of. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure. Unfortunately, people are going to be super racist against robots, but I mean, the good news is that 
I don't think racism. Yeah, I just don't think racism wins. Like, uh, racism. Yeah, racism. I think only ever worked with like small tribes, and it like helped them kill other tribes. But like, racism doesn't work for, on like a global economy, and uh, like a globe civilization. Like, you just can't. Being racist doesn't give you like a. You know, there's no aside from the morality, which sucks. Like, this it doesn't really. This doesn't work on a. It doesn't drive a lot of economic. You know, advantage. <laughs> Um, so, um, uh, yeah. Um, I think actually the ro humanoid robots is probably less scary than genetically modified humans. So I think we'll probably see genetically modified humans too at some point. We, we don't even agree with gen uh, modified food, you know, produce. Yeah. So humans are... Well, I think it's possible that, like, people will not be that scared of... Ro like, the robots will be overshadowed by the genetically modified humans, but <laughs> we don't know exactly when that happens. That's, like harder to predict but i would be stunned if we didn't have like a billion modified genetic humans by 2040 like it just like gene therapy like it'll make everybody 30 you know make everybody 20 years younger you know it's gonna like yeah it's gonna make everyone stronger and faster and healthier and skinnier and like more healthy like like it's just yeah it's it's gonna yeah yeah, I mean, I'm sure as many advances as there are technology-wise, you know, hopefully that growth is also being experienced in the medical field. Yeah, the medical field has been super slow, but I think that's one reason why I might lag behind everything else. But I think at some point it's going to flip and then be really, it'll, like it may not, it, I feel like what's going to happen is medicine's not going to get faster every single year. It's just like, a lot of stuff is going to build up and then all of a sudden all this stuff will come out, you know? Like, I guess it's getting faster, but it's getting faster at a slower rate than, like, all the stuff is building up, so. Yeah. And, and we're pretty bad at, at reporting good things like that in the world uh, because media tends to, like, focus on bad drama and uh, ignore positive things. Yeah, hopefully, hopefully the media will change soon. Um, but I think the social networks, yeah, the media, media super, it's all just ad. I guess I think ads, yeah, the internet ads broke media. It's like the only thing they make, the only thing they make money on is like clickbait now. Oh, so, but I hate it. Really bad. Yeah. Um, but maybe, maybe everyone will just go to Twitter for their news instead, and then that will end up breaking media. I don't know. But maybe, maybe I don't know. But who knows? Anyway, uh, see. I want to get to more questions that people ask. Yep. Uh, I want to get to a little. I should probably. Uh, I'll probably wrap up soon. I don't want to like. Uh, I want to. Yep. I want to try to get the personality stuff out today. So, uh, any last questions from you right now, or no? That is it. Thank you so much for chatting with me. It's always a pleasure. Nice chatting. All right, let's do a lightning round again, and then maybe one or two last questions, and then we'll take call today. All right, everyone, let's do a lightning round. Do you have anybody have any quick questions? I did not have a smoothie today. We are going to do a release in the next week or two, and then V6 is still on schedule. We'll have a lot of major releases next month. I didn't really snack anything today. I just had a storm land, which I know is not cool. Um, V7? Uh, I don't know what's in V7. It's gotta be good. Would I marry an alien? Why not? I'm not species this. <laughs> oh, um, I'm sure V will come out in the next year, but it's hard to say whether it's like two months or six months. We will keep Discord generation around. I think Discord will be great for a lot of things. I want. I think like yeah. I think Discord will be great. What part of art museums am I drawn to? I don't know. I just walk around. I like stuff at art museums. Um, yeah, the shipping, we are having some shipping challenges 
with the magazine. I talked to the team this week and they're going to spend some time and try to figure out what's going on. I think we're also going to have a, like a, a yearly edition that's like more of a hardcover that has everything in it. Can we work on video and 3D faster? Um, if there are people who want to join who are really good at that, that would make us faster. But otherwise, I think we're doing a good job. Um, uh, what's the limit of words for V6? I don't know. It will have a lot more, it'll have a lot more words. We're going to do some more community events soon. Um, we have a boat as a logo because like, just like how people use a car for, as a vehicle of movement, we want mid journey to be a vehicle for imagination. So it's like a sailboat on the ocean of imagination, ocean of dreams. Mid journey updates. I mean, right now we're supposed to new algorithms. I think the color control is going to be after V6, fortunately. We, we had an algorithm that worked, but we didn't like it, so we were holding it off. We are going to do more things like prompt challenges. We are going to have prizes one day. Um, for the AI field, you just have to do a lot of AI work yourself, um, and it's really hard. But... If you just get to put a lot of time into it and just either build things with it or like go to a school for it. But I mean, in general, I think building things better is building things is the best way to learn. Almost all AI is in Python right now. Um, cake is hard for me right now because I'm gluten-free and dairy-free. So a gluten-free, dairy-free cake is uh, tough to come by. But sometimes I get good stuff. Yeah, mochi is good. Uh, we're not looking at offloading people's GPUs right now because there isn't like a secure way to do that. But uh, maybe one day. I like white sand beaches, but black sand sounds cool. I haven't been to many black sand beaches. Um, it's going to take a long time to overtake Python and AI, unfortunately, but eventually it will happen. And general programming languages take like 20 to 30 years. They're like very slow. Um, we would like to be able to do gifting at some point, maybe by the end of the year. Yeah, it'd be cool to have an international championship, I agree. Yeah, gluten-free banana bread is so good. Oh my God, that makes me hungry. And... There will be AI natural language programming. I'm not sure. I mean, the problem with, the thing with programming is it's also about being precise. And it's hard to make something without being precise at times, but yeah, maybe. Um, do I have algorithms teaching other algorithms? I guess all AI algorithms are algorithms teaching algorithms to some extent. We don't do mid-journey office hours on YouTube. We, we just have, unfortunately, but we have notes. People post notes. All right. Questionings are petering off. Anybody have any last questions? Starting to feel really tired. So story themed image gem. We will do story generation stuff eventually. AI voice cloning. 
I like AI voices a lot. AI voice cloning is a little scary, but could have good use cases. When they make a move mid journey story, who will play me? I don't know. I mean, if there's a mid if there's a mid journey movie, it's gonna be a while from now. So like, you know, I hope they're hot. <laughs> It'll be like, man, David in that movie, they're such a dreamboat. Yeah, I don't. I, when they, whenever, if there's ever a movie with me in it, just I hope they don't make the person like a stereotypical nerd. Yeah, it's possible by the time there's like a Mid Journey movie, like uh, it'll be like an AI, it'll be an AI generated video game. Yeah, I sleep pretty well. AI generated video games. Um, I think we're gonna see video games that use AI generated assets in the next year or two, and then AI completely AI made video games for like five years. Two minute papers is a cool idea. It would be cool to have a smoothie brand. I've been avoiding smoothies lately because I don't want like too. Much. I'm trying to like reduce my sugar intake, and I just feel a lot better. like. Some people are like low sugar diets are good and I was like I'll try a low sugar diet and now I have a low sugar diet and I feel like way better all the time so dark chocolate is great I have a lot of I definitely do dark chocolate um if you zoom out of an image and add additional text it I mean it should listen to it you can always ask like prompt chat for more help Yeah, it'd be cool to have like a little mid journey, like Game Boy like thing. Yeah. Ah, uh, one second. Man, I got a bit distracted. Lol. Sorry about that. Um. Yeah, I got. I'd be. Yeah, maybe I have to upload a picture of me to Chat GPT for, and then ask it for which movie like will be like the. Who would be like the most attractive actor to play me? Ancient Chaos will be played by somebody with an incredible singing voice. <laughs> All right. Mid Journey the Musical. Oh my God. Yo, me, yeah, Lady, I, I'm, I'm kind of into the Lady Gaga aesthetic. Like, I kind of hope that I can become more of Lady Gaga. So, I think, I think I want to go more Lady Gaga one day. And it's it for the day. So, thank you everybody for coming. This has been the weekly mid journey office hours. We do these every week at 12 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Thank you for being a part of the community. I hope everybody is having fun and I hope you enjoy the stuff we release over the next week. And I will see you all next Wednesday. Actually, I might do some another event on. I might do another event too, but I don't know. We'll see. Um, see you later.